and a celebration of the work of Sonic Team and its leading light. No, not the hedgehog. Game genius Yuji Naka. But first, old-fashioned blasting. In the old days, video games often entailed moving a 2D object around a 2D world and firing. Then, when the ability to render in 3D came along, all that got pushed aside along with black and white TVs. Well, not anymore. The old-fashioned shoot-em-up might have moved from the spotlight, but it's never really gone away. The first shmup I ever played was this game's great-great-great-great-grandma, Radius. Now I feel old. But number five still seems as exciting as the first. Deftly pilot your Vic Viper craft through a barrage of bullets and collect increasingly exhilarating power-ups. But this time in much prettier regions of space and against more explosive bosses. This kind of shooter may seem antiquated, but recently games like Ikaruga have fostered startling innovation. It might look like a straightforward blaster, but its system of chaining and changing ships from black to white depending on the colour of your enemies makes it as demanding and tactical as a game of warp speed chess. We thought that Ikaruga would be the last shooter on Sega's obsolete console, but as Border Down demonstrates, in Japan at least, the Dreamcast and the side-scrolling shoot-em-up just keep on dodging those parting shots, hanging on in there with no spare lives and no continues. A testament to the greatness of the old system. Border Down, again, might look like an ordinary shooter. Very pretty and extremely busy, but ordinary. But ordinary, it's not. At the start, you choose one of three, well, kind of routes called borders. Red, amber and green, representing hard, medium and easy. If you die, you border down, which means you can come back in a different place on a different difficulty setting. I won't explain more than that, as it'll do your head in, but suffice to say, the side-scrolling shoot-em-up is alive and well and living in Japan, and will be with us for plenty of continues to come. The stupidest acronym in the whole of video games has got to be this one. M -m -m it sounds really dorky, but it stands for something intrinsically cool, the massively multiplayer online role-playing game where you and thousands of others over the internet can wander around a virtual world. There are lots of astonishing worlds that have already been created and more still to come, such as this one. Welcome to the City of Heroes, a place that's being built as a living, breathing world online. Gamepad spoke to Jack Emmert, lead designer of its architects at Cryptic Studios. Superheroes was something that had never been fully developed in the RPG field. And with massive multiplayer games, it just made a great mix. I think City of Heroes is going to be the most inviting of the massively multiplayer games because it's certainly something which everyone can identify with. There are very few people uh, that have grown up not having read a comic book. So that is our audience. Every single person who's ever wondered what it would be like to be a hero. One of the most fascinating powers which people will be thrilled to use in City of Heroes is flight. Being able to soar through skyscrapers, go up into the clouds, dive back down, uh, engage in combat with other flying foes. The objective for the players in City of Heroes is quite simple, save the city time and time and time again. Become more powerful, become famous, have statues erected in your honor, become well known to the civilians and other players. Everybody can be the hero that they envision. There are literally trillions of different possibilities on costumes alone, let alone power combinations, let alone character archetypes, uh, let alone different story arcs and contacts which a person can have. All of these things make for a unique hero. And after all, 
Everybody wants to be a hero down deep, but they want to be their own heroes. Next up, the game that all GameCube owners waited for with bated breath. A sequel to the best 16-bit multiplayer game of all time. Well, I think so anyway. It's Mario Kart Double Dash. I fell in love with Mario Kart on the SNES. Others fell in love with its incarnation on Nintendo's next console, the N64. So for fans, the latest version of this fun race game on Nintendo's most powerful system yet has the potential to raise the bar for the best game ever. Mario Kart to the power of three. Cubed! So Nintendo, it seems, have taken a lot of what was good about Mario Kart and turned up the volume. The system of hitting a target to get random power-ups still works a treat. As do the power-ups themselves. Instead of one driver, there are now two, and you can switch between them to use each to best advantage. The tracks seem brighter and busier and, I don't know, wackier? But they were always wacky. But whilst good, single player has never been the most important element with Mario Kart. It's always been, simply put, really competitive and a giggle when racing up against friends. Laying booby traps of old banana skins and firing off lethal turtle shells has always been just the most fun. Double Dash has this too and more besides, with the ability to play eight together and a novel cooperative mode where two drivers can share a cart. One steering and the other tasked with putting off the opposition. So is Double Dash a hit then? Well, actually, this game is a bit of a blow. It might look fast, but when you're playing it, you don't feel like those tiny carts have got quite enough power. Plus, the computer seems to cheat all the time, awarding itself the best weapons, especially when you're winning. And there's a little hop move that used to help you take corners, which they've left out. And without it, this just doesn't feel like a Mario Kart title to me. That mad element of fun that you're waiting for never really arrives. Kind of like the right power-up when you need it. Unless you're a GameCube, of course. I really don't wish to rain on the Mario Kart parade, but... Ah, it's too late, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> How you doing? It's me, Michael Kane. Gamepad, watch it, now. Still ahead on Gamepad, it's time to get out those rose-tinted spectacles as we take a retrospective glance at the work of those hedgehog creators, the Sonic team. But before that, it's your turn to play. This is Flipnik, a rather brilliant pinball game that takes the little metallic balls to places they've never visited before. I promise you, it's insane. A far cry from the first ever approximation of the modern game of pinball, which was called Bagatelle. But do you know, when did people first play that game? Was it 30 years ago? 40? More? Have a think about it and I'll let you know the answer after the break.
Blue Yonder Broadband Internet, sponsors of Gamepad 4. Discover the origins behind man's primal need to fight in Ultimate Warriors. Tonight at 10 p.m. only on Bravo. Oh, come on, once more. Oh, yes. Oh, yo. No, no, it's not working. No, no, no. Taking the online Churchill through his paces then, Professore? Yes. So now we could save money just by the clicking of his little doggy mouse? No. He means yes. Well, in that case, <laughs> you'll be teaching a new dog old tricks. Yes, that's funny. See how much you could save on insurance. Call Churchill now or visit us at churchill.com. I can't afford a new car. Hiya. Hi, Jen. Why don't you try a direct line? They do my car cover. They do loans, too. That's how I got my new kitchen. A direct line loan is an easy way to borrow up to £25,000 at really competitive rates based on your circumstances and loan amount. Just call 0800 068 3838 or apply online. That's 0800 068 3838 for a low-cost loan for almost anything. Or apply online. Thinking of buying a new PC this Christmas? At Dell, all our PCs are built to order, which means a PC built just for you. Like this Dell Dimension desktop with an Intel Pentium 4 processor. The Intel Pentium 4 processor delivers performance where you need it most. It comes with a 17-inch flat panel monitor and choice of free printer, MP3 player, or digital camera at an amazing £699. So, off the shelf, or built just for you. It's as easy as Dell. Call 0870-907-5609 or go online now. Have you been injured, had an accident at work, or on the road, or in a public place? Unsure if you have a claim for compensation, concerned about hidden charges? Now, there is no need to worry. The Personal Injury Helpline will handle your claim with no charges and nothing taken from the money you're awarded. So, for a risk-free quality service, call us free now on 0800 085 1715. If you don't make the call, you'll never know. Are you guilty of staying in a dead-end job? Are you bored, unchallenged, overworked or underpaid? Do you recognise your own potential? With determination, you could break free and enjoy a rewarding career in computing. CompuTeach helps thousands of people to learn skills that will give them the chance of real success. More money better prospects, better quality of life. You don't need experience. You learn mostly at home in your own time for IT qualifications that employers really want. We'll even help you find the right job. So if you want more from life, call CompuTeach now on 0800 657 657 for a free information pack. That's 0800 657 657. Get the latest rap, R&B and hip-hop ringtones for your Nokia. Text URBAN to the number 8181 for a list of the newest tones. So text URBAN to 8181. This is Permission to Rock. The mother of all rock albums. Get it now. The Pirates are coming to DVD and video. You best start believing in ghost stories. You're in one. Johnny Depp, Jeffrey Rush, Orlando Bloom, and Kira Knightley in a Thor Verbinski film. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Available from Tesco's now. UKG2 is a new channel, Monday to Sunday, from 8 till late. To work. UKG2, UK TV's new channel with bite. Blue Yonder Broadband Internet, sponsors of Gamepad 4. Welcome back to Gamepad, and a very modern game of pinball called Flipnik. Before the break, I told you that pinball has its roots in the game of Bagatelle. But how long ago was that? Well, if you said 40 years, you were wrong. 50? Nope. It's 70. Believe it or not, Pinball qualifies for its bus pass. If you've ever owned one of the old Sega consoles, you're bound to be familiar with the work of Sonic Team, who are famous for much more than creating the hedgehog they're named after. Here's a flashback. The year 
year 1991. The weather, slightly overcast rain later. The event, the release of Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic was the brainchild of this man, Sega guru Yuji Naka. And also these other people, collectively known as Sonic Team, or the Naka Bunch. OK, joke. Sonic was an immediate solid gold hit, a great game, a bible for character design, and also a technical showcase for Sega's saucy black slab of a console, the Mega Drive. The Hedgehog! Mega Drive is waiting for you! If the original Sonic caused the gaming world to weep like feeble children, then gamers around the globe had the fillings literally shaken from their mouths come the release of Sonic 2. From there, Sonic's world swelled like a cement-filled baboon, a baboon who subsequently gave birth to children with names like Sonic 3, Sonic & Knuckles and Sonic CD. Soon, TV audiences were to join gamers by whooping like idiots upon the arrival of the Sonic cartoon series. But just as it looked as if Sonic would never stop running, he stopped running. Naka and his special chums moved on to work on new concepts for Sega's latest console debutante, the Saturn. Their sci-fi fireman simulation, Burning Rangers, was a critical success. Even more well received was Sonic Team's epic Nights into Dreams. Starring a sort of unfashionable flying harlequin man who lived inside your head. A chintzier game you couldn't imagine. That is, until the Christmas edition came out. Sadly, it couldn't save the Saturn from early retirement. So, Sonic was called into play to support Sega's next console, the Dreamcast and prevent it from suffering a similar fate. Unfortunately, as well as adding the third dimension and exciting 3D action like this, Sonic Adventure came with a strangely pedestrian role-playing element, which served to scupper its chances. Hang on a minute, is that Free Willy? <laughs> Nevertheless, Sonic Team refused to rest on its laurels, or for that matter, its hardies, and set to work on other Dreamcast games of similar non-commercial merit. Games such as Quirky Shake 'em Up, Samba de Amigo, set in the world of deformed Mexicans. And Choo Choo Rocket, a bizarre online mouse based puzzle game, graphically stunted perhaps, but riddled with pure addictive qualities. <laughs> Nowadays, Sega is a software only company, and Sonic Team's rolling along as ever. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg is arguably the best game ever to feature a young boy dressed as a chicken. There's no sign yet that Sonic Team is about to be hauled off to the Knacker's Yard, or indeed, Yuji Knacker's Yard, unless it's to his backyard to enjoy a celebratory barbecue to mark the release of the Hedgehog's first game to come out simultaneously on all consoles. Sonic Heroes. A return to the frenetic mess about that endeared him to us in the first place. But remember, kids, don't try and make real hedgehogs wear shoes. It's biologically and ethically wrong. It says so on the GamePad website. <laughs> Metal arms glitch in the system made us love robots even more than we do already. And you know how much we love robots, right? You play an outmoded droid called Glitch who finds himself reactivated in a time of war and turmoil when evil robot General Corrosive is trying to take over the planet. Glitch is called to the resistance by two tiny droids called Hosed and Screwed. You're kidding me. You two are all that's left. You got a screw loose, kid? What the hell do you know about fighting mills, newbie? Nada. You got any other options, Chief? Yeah, well, learn faster, die trying. What the? Oh, oh. You stop shooting me! What follows is a mix of cute moments and hardcore, fast-paced blasting. 
punctuated by tense exploration and discovery around the levels. And hardware add-ons to deal with any situation. Well, you are a robot. Cute and clunky as this all looks, it's also pretty mean. There are over 40 sprawling areas. Yes, that's 4-0. And it's not always possible to find a save point when you need one. But keep at it, and unusually, this game packs more surprises the further you get into it. For instance, you'll be able to control other robots, as well as various vehicles. But, above all, Metal Arm's glitch in the system delivers a refreshingly irreverent robot romp. Everyone out! I can move faster on foot without you guys! Take the rat around the far side of the chasm and try and head him off the pass! Head him off at the pass? Who the hell says that? You some sort of f***ing cowboy? You better be right about this, screwboy! If you don't stop once, I will personally weld your exhaust pipe to your ball bearing! <laughs> More Mario now, as Johnny Minkley of ComputerAndVideoGames.com solves a puzzle that's been confounding some gamers for years. The game is Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World on Game Boy Advance, and the level I'm going to show you is Cheese Bridge Secret. Let's go! I'm going to take you in the game from halfway through the level. Nick, you know from the map screen that there's a red dot for this level, so you know there's a secret in there. But um, like many of the secrets in this game, it's, it's, it's a real head scratcher trying to find it out. And then you're just making your way through the level. You'll try, for example, you'll try to go down this pipe, just looking for a, another, another way out. It gets a little more difficult here with the um, hacksaws and the ropes. Just desperately trying to cling on there. But now you're, you're approaching the end of the game and you've still not seen any hint of the secret, which typically would have presented itself by now. Then you get to the end, that's the end gate. There's still a secret, but the red signs at the side indicate that there's something beyond the end gate. But the question is, how on earth do you get beyond that? And that's where the clever skills come in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you back, we'll start off again, halfway through the level, this is what you do. You've got to use Mario's flying ability. It's a real show-off thing for your friends. Go over here. On this platform now, this is where you have to make the run-up. Um, you're holding your B down. And as soon as you get to the very end of the platform, you've got to take off the last possible second. And you need to do two impeccably timed sweeps. First, directly under the first wire. Then as soon as you can again. And then dive, hold it on as long as you can, and sweep under the final exit. It takes a lot of practice, but you'll get there. Then free up your troubles. Then you'll get to the final end gate and you'll be rewarded with um, another secret level. And for one particular person in the office that's been trying to do that for 10 years, that's how. Well, that's it for now. Next time on Gamepad, we look at some games with graphics that really stand out from the crowd, including this one. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Don't you worry about a thing, Mama. I'll go catch the little rascal in no time at all. You can count on me. Gamers do not like to be told what to do and where to do it. We talk to the people behind True Crime Streets of L.A. Shiny, shiny, shiny red Ferraris. We get all revved up for Yu Suzuki's long-awaited sequel to his 1980s classic. I'm Violet Berlin, and you've been watching Gamepad. Remember, don't expect, suggest. Just a suggestion. For many millennia, the galaxy has been populated by a handful of spacefaring civilizations. These worlds were linked together by stargates. The immense ancient structures harnessed incredible energies to fold space and bridge the great distances between any two stargates. The stargates provided security and peace for those who had collectively constructed them. But the security came at a cost. 
for the rest of the galaxy remained unexplored and uncolonized. Contact was never made with the many planets incapable of interstellar travel. Trade was never realized, and political understanding never reached. This era ended when mankind joined them in the stars. For the reckless humans invented hyperdrive. A ship with hyperdrive was capable of instantaneous travel to any point in the galaxy, thereby making the stargates obsolete. Duck hunt. With your trusty hunting dog.